Hey everybody, it's Makaya and welcome back to your favorite, favorite, favorite webisodes. Let's talk. So what that means is, let's talk. So guys, before I get into the video, I just want to say thank you so much to all the love, all the support, the new subscribers. Hello, welcome to the family where we're growing and glowing together. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, y'all. Y'all don't know, y'all don't know. It was real hard to like come back because you don't know what to expect. You don't know how people are gonna respond. But I just wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to each and every one of you. I love y'all, y'all the real ones. I'm just grateful, okay? So, thank you. I also want to give a shout out to one of Let's Talk Superstar, Andrea, okay? Comment gang, she commented on the video last week. Thank you so much, love. I believe she also has a YouTube channel, so you can go in the comments of my video from last week. Click on her comment, click on her comment and go subscribe to her channel. We support it out here, okay? We're supporting out here. But anyway, that's enough. Let's get into this video. So today, y'all, we have a Q&A session, and I'm not going to lie, y'all. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. But anyway, um, we're going to answer these questions. I'm going to try to get to everyone's question. Uh, but there was a lot of questions. I'm not going to lie. More questions than what I expected there to be. Because, you know, usually you'd be like, oh, ask a question. And you get, like, three people who ask a question. And you like, then you got to go on YouTube. You got to go on Google and find questions for a Q&A session. But, no. No, some of y'all was asking four, five, six. I'm like, I'm not quick. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to stop talking. And we're going to get into these questions. So question number one, when did you know you were a whole prophet? First of all, <laughs> not a whole prophet. <laughs> Sis said, when did you know you was a whole prophet? A whole one, not a half one, not a quarter one, not a third one, a whole prophet. So my whole life, I knew, well, I didn't know, but my whole life, I knew I saw stuff. I knew I heard stuff. Um, my parents knew I was very prophetic. I mean, my mom's a whole prophet, you know. My dad's an apostle. So, <laughs> gotta run to the thing. I'm like, what the fuck I'm saying? So, like, my parents knew um, I was very prophetic. My mom said when I was three and I used to introduce myself, I used to call myself Prophetess McGuire Miller. I I know. I know I used to do that, but apparently that's what she said. Um, but I remember when I turned 14, 14 getting ready to turn 15 it was like around that time um i was super crazy for god y'all like when i say it was crazy like i'm crazy now but i was crazy then like you guys my parents i would come home but lock myself in my room and like pray all day like pray read my bible like it i just love spending time with jesus um so i went from 14 to 15 in the in that month in that like time between my birthday I went on a 21 day fast leading up to my birthday and 21 day fast with just water y'all water i'm 14 just drinking water okay <laughs> going to school and everything else and honestly that was one of the best experience i ever had like anyway that's not what we're talking about so yeah it was on that fast where i really asked the lord like what's my purpose you know what's my calling and all this stuff like that um, and I remember one particular night I was praying and I ended up like, you know, having a vision and in the vision I was in this church and, um, the person was introducing me. It was a big church. It was a huge church. Walls was yellow, bunch of people. And this person was introducing to me and he was like, um, I now introduce to you prophetess Micaiah. And I woke up and I was like, prophet? I do it is. Um, and then it was in that same week, I went to a service and the lady called me out and she said, you're a prophet to the nation. So I was like, okay, I guess I'm not crazy. So that's, that's when I knew like the Lord said it and then it was confirmed. Um, but I always knew I was prophetic. I just wasn't walking around here claiming myself as no prophet. Um, so it was, it wasn't until then where I was just like, okay, prophet is a thing. Now I still don't be walking around saying, I'm a prophet, I'm Lord. I, I still don't, but. That's when I knew. Okay, next question. What's one thing you want to accomplish this year? Honestly, 
this year i really want to accomplish getting into like um all of my entrepreneur stuff like i've been thinking a lot of like doing styling and and promotion businesses and all these different things so i really i really want to like start those things up or even or even start plans for them so i'll be able to start them next year um but i really want to accomplish like stuff my businesses next question when's your birthday september 5th september 5th okay get into it remember that put it on your calendar you can send me a gift dm me and i'll i won't send you my address but i'll send you my amazon birthday link thing i'll send you i'll send you what to get me okay cook what's your favorite food cornbread cornbread point blank period like i know i'm caribbean so I, maybe i should say crab or something like no cornbread point blank period on my dad's side they call me cornbread that's my nickname because i love cornbread i will eat cornbread all day every day did you ever struggle with imposter syndrome and how did you get over it so i'm assuming imposter syndrome as in like isn't like pretending to be somebody you're not to police people um yes yes i have especially when being so young in ministry um because i don't know about y'all but for me i'm 22 and i've always had to be around older folk in ministry I, I tell people all the time i lived a very accelerated life um and so i feel like i did a lot of stuff at very young ages so i i forget how young i am um because i've done so much and i do so much um and so yeah i've had i've had um those moments and times when i'm in spaces and i feel like i have to be something more than what i am to please or get the respect of the people I'm around. Um, and how did I get over that? I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I still am getting over it. It's a process, you know, because I still am in the places and spaces with older people who are in the gospel. And sometimes when you younger, they like, girl, you don't know nothing. Um, and so I wouldn't tell people my age. I Like for a long time, I wouldn't tell people how old I was. I would just walk up, say what I got to say and, and go about my business. But one way that I am getting over that and I am better with that is the Lord constantly reminds me of Jeremiah um, and the things he said to Jeremiah. And I think I actually made an Instagram reel about it. Um, but he reminds me of like, look, be before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Like, <laughs> you know, like don't look at their faces. Like just say what I gave you to say. Um, and you know, the Lord, the Lord is always reassuring me. It don't matter how old you are. I want you when you're young. You know, I want you when you're young. And the truth is, everybody's not connected to your yes. Um, and that's one thing I had to learn. Everybody's not connected to my yes. And the people who are supposed to hear what the Lord has said um, through me, they'll hear it. I hope I answered that question. Maybe. Maybe. Next question. Who gets on your nerves? <laughs> Do you think cranberry juice with Sprite is amazing? Never had it. But I mix Sprite with a lot of stuff, so it probably is, to be honest. How many pair of glasses do you own? Yo, I have almost 20 pair of glasses. Like, glasses, clear glasses, shades, I have like 20 pair. And I have some more on the way. I Like, I have a, an obsession between bags, glasses, watches. And you don't never know what to buy me. Those are three. Oh, and hats. I love hats and I love hoodies. If you don't know what to buy me, give, them, give me those things. All right. How was the transition from Florida to VA? <laughs> I'm still adjusting. I mean, thank God I have my husband. So it's not like I moved here like completely by myself. I have him. Um, but y'all, I'm still adjusting. I have to be completely honest with y'all. I'm still adjusting. It's cold. I've never been in a cold climate like this before. Like, I've only lived in the Bahamas and in America. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So, I'm still adjusting. Um, I think working in the area has, like, helped me become familiar with everything. But I'm still adjusting, y'all, because it's cold. What is something you would tell your 16-year-old self? Leave that boy alone. Leave that boy alone. 
leave him alone. He is not your husband, woman of God. You was wasting your time, and you're going to get your heart towed up, and your parents going to kill you. Leave him alone. Listen, maybe that would be a story time one time, but boy, <laughs> if I could tell my 16-year-old self anything, it'd be leave him alone. Focus on Jesus in school. All right, next. Is Jesus coming back soon in glory and might and shining so <laughs> Yes. Yes, he is, sis. Yes, he is. Is life treating you well? It is. It is. I think, I think life is a process. Life is a journey. And in every journey, there's a hurdle. There's a bump. Um, there's something that's just, that's just, you just be like, God, why? Why? But overall, life is treating me well. Life is treating me well. I can say life is way better than how it was some time ago. Lord, be the boy. How did you meet your husband? TikTok. <laughs> oh, that's another story for another day. We got to come on here and tell y'all that. Because I know a lot of people been asking about that. But we met on TikTok, y'all. Do you believe children are the future? Teach them, teach them well and let them lead the way. Show them all the beauty they possess inside. Yes, I believe children are the future. That's why I'm a teacher. All right, next. <laughs> Would you recommend Florida as a place to live? Um, If Jesus sends you there, go. If Jesus didn't send you there, don't go. Because it depends on, and it also depends on what part of Florida. Like Miami is ghetto. Miami's ghetto. Miami is where everybody goes. Miami is our own country by itself, okay? Miami has Bahamians, Jamaicans, Haitians, Latinos, Mexicans, like everybody's in Miami. Miami is ghetto. If you want to party, go to Miami, but you shouldn't be partying. The only party you should be doing is a Holy Ghost party. Hallelujah. How do you keep going? <sighs> Woo! So simple, but so deep. Honestly, and I said it in my last video, I have to remember that the Lord promised me an expected end. Like, I have to remember that he's the author and finisher of my faith. I have to remember that before he put me on this earth, that he had already had destiny in mind for me. I, I have to remember that. And I have to remember that everything he does is for the benefit of my life. Um, is it, It's to prosper me. Even the things that I go through, even the suffering, even the trials and the tribulations, it's all to better, better me and get me to where he needs me to go. Um, and that's what keeps me going, honestly, remembering that. And just looking back on what he's done for me and showing that, you know what, he's proven himself. And if he's proven himself all those other times and he's kept me all those other times, he'll keep me until I get to where I need to go. And so honestly, that's how I keep going. Remembering that the Lord knows the plans he has for me. And I'm alive because there's more. How has it been with adulting? Adulting is ghetto. I don't care what y'all said. I, I, that's why I cried when I turned 18. When I turned 18, I cried because I knew adulting was coming. And I didn't want to be adult. I was fine with being a child. I was fine with not having to pay no bills. I was I was fine with, you know, my, my mom and my daddy figuring out everything. I was fine with that. Adults in this ghetto, you got to pay bills. You got to be responsible. You got to do all this stuff. You got to be talking about insurance. And, and I, ain't nobody talking about that. And I'm married, too. So not only do I got to be an adult, but I got to be a wife, too. It's ghetto out in these streets. What's your favorite season and why? My favorite season is fall. Honestly, it's fall. It used to be winter, but that's because I had never experienced winter before. But now that I have experienced a winter, <laughs> take me back to fall. Hallelujah! No, I say fall because fall is so pretty. Fall, like when you just go outside, now that I'm in an area where I can actually see how fall looks with the trees, fall is just pretty. The colors are pretty. Honestly, melanin be popping in fall. I mean, it pops in every season, but fall just, I just love fall. I love fall. I love fall colors. I love fall clothes. I just, I just, fall. I just love it. Somebody said, how was it moving away from Miami? Yeah, that's kind of the same as the transition question. Um, 
but I'll add a little bit more to it. I think one of the also one of the hardest things for me is leaving my family because I don't have any family up here. You know, all my family spread between Florida and the Bahamas, and so leaving my family. You know, my parents are in the Bahamas, so I'm used to. You know, they go back and forth between the Bahamas and, you know, Miami. So, I'm used to, like, when they come to the Bahamas, I can just see them. Now, they be in Miami and I can't see them. <laughs> I haven't seen my, my, my parents since I got married. So, you know, it, I think that has been, like, the hardest thing is moving away from family, moving away from friends, and, you know, kind of coming up here and, like, cultivating a new family. And, boy, that'd be scary. Thank God. I can't say my in-laws are wonderful they're amazing people and I thank God because it's something I pray for so hard um, but they're amazing and so I think that helps the transition um, but I mean it's been good but sometimes sometimes I get homesick sometimes I get homesick all right why are your teeth so small y'all this is my sister this is my sister's question. I wasn't even going to, like, I haven't been saying whose question is who, but I'm calling her out. This is my sister, and she's so petty. My sister calls me baby T, y'all. She called me baby T. I'll call her baked potato. So, of course, she had to be silly and be like, why your teeth so small? I don't know, because the Lord made me like this. My lips already big. Why do I need big teeth? I'm going to be out here looking like a darn beaver. No, Lord. And when that music coming out, though, <laughs> so I do have music that's written they have music to it chords to them everything they just need to be produced I don't know if I can find a place to produce them then they'll be coming out but uh, right now I ain't got no place to produce them or the money to produce it so we'll see one day one day next question what's your favorite verse my favorite verse is Isaiah 43 and 19 when when it talk about he'll make ways in the wilderness and rivers in the desert that that scripture right there let me tell you something that scripture right there okay my life it's my life no question just want to say i love the pure light that you bring to the world oh thank you we bless the lord I really be trying because I'm not perfect. Hey, but the Lord still loves me. How are you liking the married life? Yeah, let me tell y'all something. <laughs> tell y'all something. All y'all little YouTube couples, all y'all little Christian YouTube couples, and y'all little Christian couple influencers, every single last one of y'all lied to me and I'm upset. Every single last one of y'all, like y'all made it seem like it was a fairy tale. Y'all made it seem like I was gonna be like Cinderella with a fairy godmother, okay? And, and ride away in some chariot to some mansion. That's how y'all made it seem. And every single last one of y'all lied. Talking about something. Oh, yes, he just so awesome. And I bless the Lord for him. And the Lord bless me. Baby, yes, the Lord bless me. I love my husband. But y'all don't be talking about the amount of work you got to put in. Nobody wants to talk about it. Nobody want to tell the truth. Nobody want to tell the truth and say that marriage is work. Nobody want to tell the truth and say marriage is an adjustment. Nobody want to tell the truth and say some days y'all not going to like each other. Nobody wants to tell the truth. And y'all need to tell the truth. Tell the truth. Stop lying to these people, man. No, honestly, marriage is a beautiful thing. I bless the Lord for my husband. I love my husband. Like, the Lord knew what he was doing when he made me marry this man. Like, the Lord the Lord knew what he was doing. Um, most definitely ordained. Um, but it is an adjustment. It's an adjustment. You know, you have two people, two imperfect people um, coming together as one, bringing you know, their strengths and their weaknesses, um, bringing their insecurities, bringing their flaws, bringing all these different things. And so it's an adjustment. Um, and I think it will always be an adjustment because at the end of the day, you two are always growing. Um, but married life has been good, but it's been a big lesson. It's, I feel like every day I'm learning something. I feel like every day the Lord's showing me something new. Um, Every day is just a new experience. And so I love it. It feels like an adventure. Uh, but all in all, I bless the Lord for it. But it is work. Every day you have to get up and choose the person. That's one thing they don't tell you. Like, love is a choice. Marriage is a choice. 
And every day you have to wake up and choose to love your spouse. And that's just the truth. Me and my husband are, we don't make sense. We don't make sense. Like, honestly, if there was a camera following us, we'd have some of the best content. Because sometimes we act like pure idiots. <laughs> but, like, you got two creatives, two TikTokers, two influencers in a marriage. Like, it's going to be crazy, okay? But all in all, it's good. I love my husband. I love my mountain man. He don't like when I call him a mountain man because he... He said he from the country, but he not country. He a city boy, but he's still my mountain man. All right. In the terms of marriage, oh, we got another marriage question. Do y'all want? Um, do y'all want me and my husband to come on here? Cause we can. I can make that happen. Y'all just gotta let me know if that's what y'all want. I can make that happen because we got a lot of marriage stuff in here. Um, in the terms of marriage, is it all that you ex that you've expected it to be? No. And, oh, no, I mean, because of my parents' marriage, like, watching my parents' marriage, and my parents, I can say I bless the Lord for them because they've been very honest with me when it comes to, when it comes to the area of the marriage, and they've been very transparent about what marriage is and how marriage can look. And um, even when me and my husband went through marriage counseling, you know, the, the our pastors who did, um, the marriage counseling you know they were even very transparent and very honest and and told us it was going to be an adjustment um and so i knew it wasn't going to be easy um i knew it wasn't going to be awful um i knew there was going to be adjusting i knew there was going to be work but i don't i don't think i was fully prepared for what everything that marriage came with like marriage really stretches you it really stretches you um and it really shows you yourself it magnifies who you are as a person and I think in my marriage I've learned so much about me and I didn't expect to learn all this stuff about me and I'm just like whoa I'm like that for real that's crazy. <laughs> but the truth is, matters of the heart really magnify who you are. Relationships magnify who you are. And, you know, sometimes we're getting we're in places where we're like, oh, I'm not like this. I'm not like that. And then you get in a relationship and you're like, oh, this relationship changed me. And I'm like, no, no. The relationship just magnified who you are. Uh, <laughs> and that's what the matters of the hearts do. And I feel like that's what marriage is supposed to do. Show you you. Marriage is supposed to show you you. It's supposed to stretch you. Um, you're supposed to learn from it. You're supposed to grow from it. Um, and so, yeah, it, I didn't. I didn't expect all the growth. I didn't. I didn't expect to grow so much. Much. I didn't expect to learn so much about myself. I didn't expect to see so much of me in my marriage. Like I. I don't know if that makes sense. But I didn't. Ex I didn't expect that. I knew there was going to be growth. I knew there was going to be stretching. Like, I knew I was like, okay, there's probably going to be stuff I got to work on. Blah, blah, blah. But, child, please. I got married because, you know, I got a degree in communications and all this stuff. And, you know, I've always been big on communicating in my whole life. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a great communicator. Child, I got married and be like, oh, my communication skills are not as good as I thought it was. You come into marriage and you thinking like, oh, you know, you got it all together. Child, marriage have a way to show you how much you don't have it together. But how you could get it together. And so, yeah, I didn't, I didn't expect all the learning. I didn't expect all the growth. But I'm grateful for it. And I can say I've, I've become a better woman. <laughs> I've become a better woman because of it. So, yeah. What's one of your deepest heartache? with God and how how did you get over it so me and my husband got married July 5th we were supposed to get married February 12th last year and the week before our wedding when I tell you the crap hit the fan the crap hit the fan and when it comes to the area of marriage, before my husband, I was already over the whole thing. And I was like, I don't need to be married. I don't want to be married. God, you could keep it. You know, my daddy said, I don't got to get married. No way. So, <laughs> I don't got to get married. I'll be the rich auntie. You know, I'll preach your word. I'll do whatever you want me to do. But marriage 
it's just not for me because I had already been through so much with other men are going. I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Um, so the Lord really had to deal with me when it came to the area of marriage when my husband did come. Um, and that's, again, a whole story for a different time. But the week before our wedding was supposed to be the first time, a whole bunch of stuff hit the fan and we had to postpone the wedding. And I think I, out of my whole life, I think that was the one time where I was so overcome. I was so undone. I like, I was so upset with God. It didn't make it. I was mad y'all. Like I was mad. I'm not even going to tell y'all what I did because my parents are watching this. <laughs> I was so mad with God, and I remember going off, clean off, because I'm like, yo, I already told you. I told you from the very get-go, I didn't want to do this, and then you brought this man to me. I'm like, all right, okay, I submit to your will. I do whatever you want me to do, and then the week before my wedding, yo, the week before my wedding, all this stuff happened with this person and that person and this storm and that storm and this can't come and da 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 and all the all these different things like really before the week before my wedding yo the week before my wedding no you got to be kidding me i was so upset i was so mad because i was like yo you're supposed to be a promise keeper and at this point i feel like you're lying to me and i was so mad i was so mad with god like i remember i was i was sitting in my car crying and i'm going off thank you god because the lord really could have smite me because the way i was talking to him it was real bold and rambunctious you know i was real biggity 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 bod and jesus really could have told me about myself and killed me right then and there because i was i was saying some things you just don't say to god you don't say them things to the creator um but i was really i was going off because i was just i was so upset I was so mad and I was like, this is not fair. I've been faithful. Blah, blah, blah. And it was in that moment, in that moment, in that week. Cause y'all, when I tell y'all, I cried every day. I cried every day. My family could have said I was crying every day, every day, every day, every day. And the Lord really had to grab a hold of me. He had to grab a hold of me. And he had to say, listen. The truth is, if you never got married, if you never got the desires of your heart, will you still serve me? Will you still serve me? And I had to, I was like, whoa. He was like, is your love for me unconditional or is it conditional? Do you love me? Because you love me or do you love me because what I can do for you? Do you love me because what I can give you? Do you love me only on the term of your conditions and what you want? Or do you love me because you truly love me because you choose to? If you never get the desires of your heart, will you still serve me? Or will you stop? Is your love conditional or is it unconditional? And that right there, <laughs> that right there just, just stumped a girl. It stumped me. It stumped me. Um, and, and it was in that moment where I had to submit my desires. I had to submit my wants. I had to submit even how I felt and said, you know what? God, I love you more than all of this. I love you more than all of this stuff that's going on. Yes, I'm upset. Yes, I'm mad. Yes, I'm dis disappointed. But I love you more. And I'm going to trust you. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. That's that's another way I overcome it. Because I'm so glad that the Lord knows exactly what he's doing. I'm glad all that stuff happened and my wedding had to be postponed. Because so much greater stuff happened. Me and my husband was able to get so much more. Um, because it was postponed. It was, it was a blessing in disguise. Yeah, I think. I think that after that, I just had, I had to, I had to do a job and say, though you slay me, yeah, I'll trust in you. Yeah, I'll trust in you. And you'll never lose a battle. And yeah, I just had to trust God. That's how I overcame it. I had to trust God 
and I had to my love for him had to be greater for the love for the things that I wanted it just had to be last question I feel like yo this is like 44 minutes long but where I'm gonna do some editing editing last question does your husband pick you up from school or make you catch the bus home I'm done <laughs> I'm done. Goodbye. Really, Brandon? No, I'm calling you out. Really, Brandon? That's that's what you took your time to type up. That's what you took your time to ask me. Out of all the questions in the world you could have asked me, that's what you asked me. Really? Really? Whatever. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, uh, that's it. Um, I hope I answered all your questions. I really hope I answered them. Especially the ones that, like, you know, were more about serious things. I really hope the answer helped you. I really hope it made sense. I pray it made sense. Um, but, yeah. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Turn on the post notifications. Leave a comment so that you can get a shout out. But anyway, with that being said, with that being said, remember, your applause puts God equals flawless. So, go ahead. Peace. To love and serve the Lord. Bye.